Hello and welcome to week 34 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about tips, tricks, and other considerations for health tests in application request routing or ARR. So I've been covering ARR over the previous three weeks and if you haven't seen those yet it may be worthwhile to start there. And so I'll assume that you know ARR already and I'll jump right in. To have a properly functioning server farm, it must be automated so that if any server fails, that the load balancer will take that node automatically out of rotation, even if it's the middle of the night. However, you don't want to be too aggressive and that you take nodes out of rotation and you're left with no servers left to serve up your website, even if some of the servers possibly were fine the whole time. So that's where properly configured health checks come in. And so today, let's dive right in. First, I want to show you how to work with ARR and itself. And then I'll give five principles for health tests in ARR that I believe are worthwhile to live by. So let's take a look at ARR. I've set this up already, so I'm not going to go through and uh, you can watch previous videos if you want to see the setup, but you can just assume it's an ARR with two backend nodes that it's using. And Contosa.com, for example, as you can see, I have two servers that it's bound to. So what we do is actually, first of all, let's go to our web nodes and let's go to uh, this one here. I'm on one of the two backend web servers and you can see it's nice plain and simple. Default website is listening on all traffic right now and we're going to create a simple page and let's call it underscore lbtest.aspx. You can call it whatever you want of course and let's edit this. Now I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the principles in a few minutes but it's my opinion that you should not test the site you're testing instead the server. So you're not testing your database driven pages, you're not testing any of that back end stuff. That's something else and I'll cover that in a bit. So really all you, in my opinion, all you really need is this. And what this is testing, it's testing that your app pool works, it's testing that the app domain, in my case it's ASP.NET, you could do the same for PHP or whatever you use. And it also makes sure that ASP.NET is serving up some basic test. And that's it. And so this is set up and because of what we've set up already it's going to be automatically replicated between the two nodes. So let's go back again to the ARR server and that's this one here and now notice if I go to health and monitoring that both nodes are shown as healthy and we don't have any health tests set up yet it wasn't by default and so as a result even if one of the nodes is turned off it's still going to show it as healthy which of course we don't want. So let's go here in ARR to the health test node and notice we have the ability here to enter in our own URL. So let's do one. Now this is interesting because notice if I do contosa.com as a domain and underscore lbtest.aspx, notice the issue we have is which node is that going to, right? We have a single URL but I have two servers on the back end. Well here's what happens. When that te test is made it will actually switch the IP address for the particular nodes. And actually, let me apply and I'll show you which ones. Is here in servers, those two IPs are swapped when it makes a backend request. So it will maintain the header, but it's going to swap the actual IP address itself. So now let's do a verify URL test. And notice it hits the two nodes and see what it's doing. Is it swaps the server address for you, but it's going to maintain that www.contosa.com. So right now, this is plain and simple, it's going to work. Now, there's a few things we want to change. One, let's actually uh, go here, contosa.com, and notice that they're both marked as healthy. Now what I want to do is let's switch to another one of the nodes, let's say this one here, and I'm going to stop the site. We'll pretend it broke, and now it's completely stopped. And so now if we wait for a few seconds, it's actually checking every 30 seconds right now, and there. So after refreshing, notice that it says uh, one node is unhealthy and the other one is healthy. So it, it notices really quickly. And what we can do is if we put that back in rotation, so again, let's start this and switch back again. Now we should be able to refresh and again within 30 seconds we're going to see these back to healthy. There we go. And both healthy. Okay, so some considerations. A few things you want to check here is let's take a walk through of these settings. Um, one is our interval, so we saw this already, and notice it maintains the host header, but swaps in the IP. We are seeing our interval, it's going to check every 30 seconds, and it needs to check for a duration of 30 seconds. If it doesn't get the response within 30 seconds, it's considering that too slow. 
and it considers the server bad. Now, the one thing that ARR does not have, I wish it, wish it did, and I hope it does in the future, is checking for multiple statuses. I would like to have it actually notice two or three consecutive failures before it takes it out of rotation, because even a healthy server can have a single failure every once in a while. So this will do a little bit of flapping uh, because of that, but for the most part, it's, it's really fine. Now, the acceptable status code, and in this case, I'm going to switch it to just 200, to make it very specific, because let's say something happens and it does a redirect. For example, ASP.NET, if there's a failure, it will throw a 302 redirect, even though it's a, you would think it's a 500 error. Well, it does a redirect first to the 500 error, and it shows up to ARR as a 302. So this way, it will always be considered healthy, if it really is healthy. And the response match watches for particular words. So again, if it throws it off, it's different than it expects then it's, it's aware of that right away. So you can see these both pass. Okay, this is a URL test, and this pulses. Every 30 seconds, it's going to go out and make that request for you. Now, the next thing to consider here is the live traffic test. And in my opinion, I like to turn this off and leave it off. I don't use it, and I'll tell you why. What this is doing, now it's, it's disabled by default. If the failover period is set to zero, it's disabled. But what it's doing is, let's say you're watching for this in 10 seconds. If you see 500 errors, 10 of them, over a period of 10 seconds, now what this is doing, it's not checking. It has nothing to do with this URL. It's watching all the traffic as it goes by. And it says, hey, there's a lot of 500 errors. Let's just take this out of rotation. And you may find that worthwhile, but here's the gotcha. Is if you have someone finds a 500 page, hits the refresh button a few times, on a single bad page, then all of a sudden that node is taken out of rotation. And they keep doing it, all the nodes will be taken out of rotation. Excellent way to do a denial of service attack on someone. And we've actually seen this happen in real life. So personally, I like to rely on the top one and leave the bottom one turned off. But your mileage may vary, and that's what this is for. So this is a status code range that you do how many failures over how many seconds. And then what happens is it relies on this top one to bring it back into rotation again. So ne or make sure you never have this bottom one without the top. Otherwise, it's going to fail, fail, and it never knows to bring it back online. Now, this is really handy, this minimum servers. And what this is, is let's say you have a 10-node web farm, and in those 10 nodes, you need around five to handle your traffic. And the rest are for redundancy and Christmas time and things like that. Well, what you may want to do is say, what is your minimum servers, and set it to that setting. And in my case, I have two nodes. I'm going to leave this at one. What that means is if both nodes were to fail, we don't want to start throwing errors. We're going to say, hey, let's at least turn them back on again. I would rather that rather than no one gets any traffic, let's allow some traffic to get through to some people. I'd rather throw out, use the bad nodes than to just turn off all nodes. And this protects you from a case of the health test being disabled or something wrong with the health test. It actually re-enables these nodes again for you. Okay, so these are the main settings and to consider here within ARR. Now another thing I want to cover is what if you want to customize the error page that happens if all nodes are taken out of rotation or something does respond wrong. So, and I have this actually in my blog, if you were to search for uh, the term 502 or error page and I have one called what the failed request counter in ARR really means. And in here, I actually cover the 502.3 error is um, what this means is that there's a timeout on the page request. So ARR isn't able to complete that. The default is 30 seconds because it's proxying that request. It says, I'm not going to wait forever. Eventually, I have to tell people that I can't get an answer. And so you actually may want to change that from 30 to a, a higher number. Often at times, I'll switch that to 60 seconds or actually 90 seconds. And the other is a 502.4 which means no web servers are available. And you can get that even if the minimum servers are there. Sometimes there's a little bit of a race condition and you can serve a 502.4. So the question here, and maybe it's kind of outside the breadth of what I should be talking about today, but just briefly, if you want to customize this, the way you can do it is you go to the first touch point here, the site that the request is bound to, and if you go to your custom error pages, your error pages here, you can actually create a 502.2 and a 502.3 and serve up a custom image and that's where this comes in handy. So it kind of ties in with the health test there. Another thing I wanted to mention with ARR and this is one gotcha that, that is a little bit of a pain and that's this. The health tests have to run 
under it's a web request that's made and it works within the w3 wp.exe process the problem is that ARR its health test doesn't know which worker process to use so if we go start task manager and let's jump down to right now on this test machine I have two worker processes set up so it actually runs the health test under both of these which means there's going to be two requests right now if you have a half dozen app pools or even more depending on how your server is set up you actually may get a lot more than that and that's kind of a big drawback something you want to watch and so the health monitoring can really kind of nail your back-end nodes rather than just the one request every 30 seconds it may be six requests every 30 seconds for every site that you're doing a test on there's no workaround or solution that I'm aware of apart from potentially dedicating the server for just ARR so you only have a minimal amount of app pools so finally I said I would mention some health check principles to live by so the first is don't shortcut on your health checks make sure that you are checking a specific page that you want to check put some thought into it make sure that you do turn them on it is important uh, second health checks should only check the health of the server and not the site and let me tell you why and what I mean by this it used to be that I would say let's set up a page so we're checking everything it should go and hit the database it should do a web service call and that way if there's any failures we take that note out of rotation well later on I realized the folly of my recommendation there the issue that we have is that what if the database server fails well that's gonna fail for all the nodes and you're taking all the nodes out of rotation that's not what a health check is for a health check is only meant to be testing the health of the particular server that it's testing so don't check more than the server use your other monitoring software to do that it's important to do that but don't do it with your health check it's a different purpose different rule another thing to watch for is health checks should always work even in maintenance mode and for example appoffline.htm can throw things for a loop and so you want to make sure that you check when you put your server in maintenance mode and you put your down for maintenance page that it doesn't also cause your health check to fail if it causes your health check to fail people aren't going to see your down for maintenance page that you thought you had so wisely planned so watch those health checks under all circumstances the fourth is make sure that you are checking both the HTTP status code and also some content and I found that it's worthwhile to check the content within it uh, now in this case in my example I just watched the word success but if you do happen to do check a larger page what I've seen before maybe this pertains a little bit more to your monitoring but where an inside part of a page will throw an exception because someone who's doing a web service call and injected it into the inside part of the page it still showed a 200 status code but the page was completely different than what someone expected and so you want to make sure that you're checking both the status code don't leave a wide open don't do the range from 200 to 399 which is the default because that's not going to catch ASP.NET throwing errors and finally always set the minimum servers it's better to have some people with some failures than all people with a complete failure unless your particular situation is different it's absolutely essential that if a server fails you take it out of rotation you don't want anyone to see anything bad whatsoever and in that case you can serve up one of the 502 errors instead but in my case I usually find that setting the minimum servers to whatever it takes to handle your site that's what I find the most worthwhile Hope you found this useful, and I do have more coming with ARR, and so hope to see more of you. Hope you have a great week. Thank you.